Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to try to be as brief as possible. Thank you, Tilting Axis, for having me. Um, where's my, here we go. Yeah, so my name is Jason Fitzroy Jeffers. I am a writer and filmmaker, originally from Barbados. I've been in, I've been in uh, Miami for about 20 years now. I um, have been working there as a journalist for, for a very long time, and then maybe about five years ago, I started making the transition into filmmaking. And uh, I, well, that, I mean, that was largely because the print industry was dying and I had to figure out something else to do. But I had always harbored these visions of becoming a filmmaker. But in so doing, I, I, I realized that there were so many challenges confronting Caribbean filmmakers. And so what came out of that was Third Horizon, which is a collective of Caribbean filmmakers. Uh, myself, um, Keisha Ray Witherspoon, and Robert Sawyer. We started this group to, um, one, produce our own films. Um, let me just get going. Our first film was uh, Papa Machete, a short film about the esoteric martial art of uh, Haitian machete fencing, a short documentary. Um, the experience, I mean, it was a life-changing experience making this film. Uh, it's a, a very little known martial art, even within Haiti. Uh, it, uh, it's a truly Creole form. It's a, a, a fusion of African stick fighting and, um, and European saber fencing that grew, th you know, grew through the revolution. Um, and there are very few people who still practice it. Uh, we found uh, this gentleman, uh, Professor Alfred Avril, he, he calls himself the professor. And um, he led us into his world. And it was the experience of making this film and everything that has followed has been, whew, uh, it was our first film. And yet uh, we, we were able to go to Sundance with it, uh, Toronto International. It, it, the world just kind of exploded. Thank you. Um, it's, you can now find it on the National Geographic website. Um, how do I? Oh, there we go. It's now featured on National Geographic. We're at a million plus views at this point. Um, it just seems to keep going. I mean, that was 2014 it came out and it, we're still playing film festivals. Um, our next project was, um, we co-produced Swimming in Your Skin Again by the uh, director, Terence Nance, uh, a short film about a young artist's encounters with the ocean goddess Yamaya. It was found in uh, Candomblé, Haitian Voodoo, Santeria, uh, Yoruba. Um, that too went to Sundance, um, Rotterdam, several other film festivals. So anyway, all of, that's all, you know, great. but. What we realized is that very often we would go into we would go into these spaces and you know there's been this conversation about diversity in the film industry over the last few years. But within that, we would never encounter any other Caribbean people wherever we would go. And we were like, well, how do we change this? How do we bring Caribbean people into these spaces? How do we create a bit of a pipeline back and forth between, say, you know, Hollywood and I don't know, Martinique? Guadeloupe, Barbados, Trinidad, you know. Um, so with that, we decided to go from just being a production hub, Third Horizon, to founding our own festival, um, the Third Horizon Caribbean Film Festival. We held the inaugural edition last year uh, at O Cinema in Miami uh, with the support of the Knight Foundation, Flo, Time Warner, and the Green Family Foundation. Uh, we had eight feature films. Um, Everything from a gritty action film set on the streets of Port of Spain, uh, God Loves You Fighter, to um, you know, a documentary about Stuart Hall, the Stuart Hall Project. Uh, it wasn't just limited to Caribbean filmmakers, but it was also, for example, there's a film, um, The House on Cocoa Road by Damani Baker, which is a documentary about his, uh, he's originally from California, his family going to um, Grenada during the time of the revolution. Um, we're really interested in, you know, I haven't even been referring to my cards. Um, you know, we're really interested in investigating the Caribbean as, we're interested in the Caribbean as a process, as 
not just a place, but also as a process. You know, I mean, as a kid, I digested so many, so many films and television shows from the States. And I kind of felt at the time that my stories were secondary or not as important as those as the ones that I was taking in. And then as I got older, I came to realize, well, not only are our stories foundational, they're almost like a roadmap to the future, right? So the festival is, the idea is that not only do we showcase this work, but we also have workshops, um, which we streamed online as well, where we could educate filmmakers on the process of getting their work out there, um, really bringing this industry together, creating a dialogue between filmmakers around the region that doesn't often happen. Um, we also had a music and visual art component. Um, we had a show, uh, Sheena Rose's solo show, Black Obia, um, curated by Christopher Crozier of um, Alice Yard and Mikhail Solomon of PRISM. For those keeping count, um, that is the fourth Christopher Crozier reference up here today, I believe. Um, I'm really, how much time do I have left? Four minutes. I'm really happy to be here because, you know, being here last year at, uh, in Miami at, at Perez was, it really opened up my thinking about, you know, different modes of attack and, you know, different, different ways that I could, you know, work through Third Horizon. Um, one of the opportunities that came out of that was going to um, Atelier 89. Uh, Elvis Lopez graciously invited me to come down there and teach a month-long documentary workshop. Uh, we produced, what was it, 12 films by different students. Um, and it was, what I really, really enjoyed about it is that it was giving people the, the understanding of how to craft stories in their communities that maybe their newspaper might not write about, that their television stations might not choose to cover. You know, taking ownership of our stories and understanding that it's not that hard to get them out there. Um, this was a really, really fulfilling experience. Thank you, Elvis. It was amazing. Um, also coming out of Tilting Axis last year, I met um, Lise Ragbear of um, Warfield Center at the uh, University of Texas at Austin. She invited me to do a screening of Papa Machete there and uh, a, a conversation about the film. We even taught a machete fence in class. That was fun. Um, I also met Nicole Smith-Johnson um, at, it was last year we met, right? Yeah. Uh, who we'll be working with this year. Um, yeah, so what are we doing now? We're working on the next edition of the festival. We're still producing short films. As um, soon as I get back, we're going into production on another short film and we're developing a feature film which we'll be shooting in 2019. Um, we we're interested in doing pop-up workshops across the Caribbean because there's really a need for something that I see happening a lot is that a lot of Caribbean filmmakers are making feature films which I don't think, I mean, that can certainly happen, but as a young industry, there's a need to figure out how to work your way into the international film circuit. And the best way to do that is through the film festival. The easiest way to get into the film festival is to make a short film. It also is an opportunity through which filmmakers can develop their voice. They don't spend what little money they have, what little resources they have on a feature film which then maybe does not go too far and they're like, you know what, that's it, I'm done. Make a few short films, find your way into the circuit. So that's something that we'll be doing is, you know, popping up a few places, bringing in, you know, people that we have become connected with over the years uh, through, the ex through traveling with our films. Um, we'd also like to get these films out there, the films that we showcase at the festival. Uh, we work very closely, our partner actually in the festival is the Caribbean Film Academy in New York. They screen Caribbean films at uh, Brooklyn Academy of Music. Um, so between, between our two organizations, we're able to show these films in Miami and New York, but they need to be seen elsewhere, you know? They don't make it into the major chains like AMC and Regal and whatnot. So, you know, taking these films with a day-long festival of sorts, that's, that's another thing that we're working on. Um, and then lastly, I shouldn't even mention that, but, <laughs> but um, you know, one of the great things that has come out of the success of the films that we've been, how are we doing? Yeah, okay. Uh, one of the great things that has come out of um, touring with our films is that we've been able to make great uh, connections in the industry and 
I think what would really serve the Caribbean film industry well is to develop a model through which filmmakers from outside the region can come in, get a Caribbean experience through which, you know, it serves their writing, it serves their process, but then also allows them to in turn give back to the island that they're visiting, teach some of these techniques, because we don't have, there are very few film programs in the region. So how do we then, how do we then teach our budding filmmakers how to make films, bring in filmmakers? So that's, um, that's it. Thank you.